Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my couch. I have a lot of stuff here. Pillows and stuffed animals and blankets. That is something that I need when I am watching a movie, a TV show, whatever. And you've been here before. Hi everyone, welcome to my couch. My name is Camilla and today we are watching Ford v Ferrari. I do not know much about racing. For example, I don't know anything about Formula One that is happening in the world. It is huge in the world right now. I know nothing about it whatsoever. The only thing I remember in my life right now, because it was so, it was like a few months ago, Gran Turismo came out and due to me being part of the PlayStation family in Norway, I was invited to watch the movie and I fell in love. I ended up buying the game, buying like a steering wheel and pedals, and I was hooked for three weeks. I was going to become a racer chick. I was going to learn how to build my own race car and all of that, but it stopped after three weeks. We have my moral support, my best companion. He's going to be here. We don't have a name for him. He's from Valorant. Yeah. We have some snacks, something to drink. I'm so excited. This was actually requested through my Ko-Fi. My full reaction is linked down below over on Patreon, of course. My social media also linked down below. My second channel, gaming channel, totally go check that out. Thank you guys so much for joining in. I'm so excited to have you along and let's get into Ford v Ferrari. The people that are in this movie, or the movie is about, I know those are real people. So I feel like this is going to be kind of like a documentary, or at least based on true stories. This is live coverage of the 1959 24 Hours of Le Mans. We've reached the halfway point. Driven by Carol Shelby, making great gains in the last hour. Christian Bale? <gasps> He's coming in, let's go, let's go! Let's go, let's go! I know you're tired! Come on, let's make this fast! Go, go, go! He's running a little hot, watch it! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Talk about being on fire! You okay? Feel the tank! Shelby, you just am I on fire? Am I on goddamn fire? No, no you're not on fire. Tank. Fill the tank. Fill the tank. Oh, uh, this casting? So far, so good already. Wow. Aston Martin number five, driven by Carol Shelby, has maintained his lead as we're nearing the final minutes of the race. The checkered flag is out. The crowd are on their feet. Takes the title. An American wins. Lamar Shelby. Carol Shelby. What? This is something you can't ignore anymore. Oh, I take the pills. Pills work. Do they? Well, I could race NASCAR, Formula One. The valve is shot. Shelby, this is as serious as it gets. In my opinion, you're lucky to be sitting here today. Well, I feel real lucky. Luckiest guy on earth. I think he's being sarcastic. I love this actor so much. I'm glad to finally see him in something else. There's a point, 7,000 RPM, where everything fades. The machine becomes weightless, just disappears. And all that's left is a body moving through space and time. 7,000 RPM, that's where you meet it. I ask you a question. The only question that matters, who are you? Now it's fun trip to the Ferrari. Coming into the cold screen. <laughs> hey, He's breaking. John Berthold is in this. A month ago, this car was fun. Now, it won't even start. And when it does, boom, boom, boom. When I pull out of the driveway, the dog has a heart attack. What? Why is he, why is he laughing? He coked up the inlet valves and the clogs. Nothing wrong with the car. It's the way it's being driven. That there, that is a sport car. You have to drive her like a sport car. If you drive her like a school teacher, she'll clog up. All right, try changing up at 5,000 RPM, not two. Drive like you mean it. Hard, tight, she'll run clean. That accent, how long did it take him to learn that? But if you ask me, this isn't your car. Your car's more a Plymouth Studebaker. You and me have a problem, buddy? I don't have a problem. I had an MG, mine ran just fine. I want my money back. Oh, behave. I'll give it to you. But you haven't paid for last month's service this yet. This country, the customer's always right. Oh, that's bull. Yeah, that's a nonsense. Yeah, utter nonsense. Get the range up! Good lad! Range up! Another satisfied customer. Yep. 
can help you, miss. Wasn't that an MGA 1500? Ah, you know your cars. I love the sound they make, the way it goes right through you, that vibration. Reminds the uh, wood panelled country squire. <laughs> Is it fast? No, what type of girl are you? Type of girl who likes the smell of wet gasoline. Was he some kind of a deviant? <laughs> well, only since I married you. Okay, there we go. I was like, what is happening? Oh! My darling! He's so good at his job. Hear that? That's the sound of the Ford Motor Company out of business. What? He was ruminating. That morning, he had himself an idea that changed the world. 65 years and 47 million automobiles later, what shall be his legacy? Here's what I want you to do. Walk home. While you're walking, I want you to ruminate. Man comes to my office with an idea. That man keeps his job. Oh. Losers, stay home. You don't belong at Ford. Wow, tough business. You always have that clever look in your eyes. You know exactly what you're gonna do. It's 8.30 a.m. baby, time to roll. Hey Phil, hey Bob, Shelby here? Uh, it's touch and go. There we go. Shelby, you're up bright and early. Well, early bird gets the worm, Pops. <laughs> I guess we can say it like that. On Ron, Will, you're still driving. Mr. Shelby, can I get an autograph? Thank All you right, so just relax. We're lighter, we're faster, and that don't work, we're nastier. Uh-oh. Your trunk doesn't close. Can I, can I ask you a question? When you were a little boy, did you think, when I grow up, I want to go fabled Willow Springs Raceway, and I want to enforce paragraph 15.4, section 2B of the SEC regulations on luggage capacity? I'm, I'm ruling you and your team disqualified from this race. Ah, oh, well, if it isn't Lance or Bentlow. That is so rude. But we kind of asked for it, you know. He was a USAC road racing champion in 61. He won the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. And this piece of shit MG he built himself. We heard so, he's uh, difficult. No, no, Ken's a puppy dog. Hey. <laughs> uh, Brumos is looking for a driver for our number two car at Sebring. Is that right? Oh, well, is he, uh, is he putting his bloody carry all in your trunk? Yeah, we need help. You can stick this bloody sticker where the sun Hey, hey, Bill. Oh, no, here is an arsehole. No, he doesn't mean no, that. No, yes, he does. No. Something like this, there's always a middle ground. All right, now Ken's out of line. I'm just right? doing my job. I understand you are. You're not going to DQ us over at Trump. Now he's lost then. Happy Bill! Have a great day. You know who that was I was just talking to? Bill. Before that. Nope. It was Dieter Voss. Who's that? He runs Porsche, Ken. It's a little German car company. Maybe you heard of it. A little? Oh, I thought we felt the same way about the Germans. You like losing, Ken? I don't lose. Without sponsors, you get no car, Ken. And last I checked, the professionals all Shell. have a car. Mm -hmm. You cannot win the SCCA without one. If you're not winning, you are losing. Don't make me lamp this at your head. Did you bring your son all the way out here to watch you get disqualified or just act like a jackass? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Great, now he broke it. Well, that answers that. Yeah. Bloody hell! to drive, you pillock! Shelby, you miss it. Guy wins the 24 hour of the Mans, suddenly retires, starts selling cars. It just don't make sense. Well, unless the rumors are true, of course. Ooh. But Carol Shelby quit driving because he lost his nerve. And now he has to prove them wrong, right? No, his son is watching you. Is he okay?
actually won! <laughs> Not even the photo finish, he actually won! <laughs> wow, Miles. Good. Yeah. That goes for a nice cup of tea! No. We did it. What's wrong? She's not happy. The IRS came. They padlocked the garage. What? Just to be clear, we are buggered. Absolutely. Yes, and deadly. As in, not a bean or a pot used to piss. Oh. My tools are locked up in there. I'll forget something else. In 1945, what was the first thing that they did? They had sex. We need to make sure that he gets to keep his house and make money for his family. You see, kids today, they want glamour, sex appeal. They want to go fast. It's time for the Ford Motor Company to go racing. We're already in racing, Iacocca. You go to the movies, you open up a magazine, you see good old boys in Winston-Salem. You see uh, Sophia Loren. <laughs> James Bond does not drive a Ford, sir. That's because he's a degenerate. Oh! See? God, I'd like to be a degenerate. <laughs> Is say. this part of it? He's going anywhere, Ayakoka? You are so difficult, sir. Lee, in the last three years, you and your marketing team have presided over the worst sales slump in U.S. history. Why exactly should Mr. Ford listen to you? Mm. Ferrari. Now they've won four out of the last five Le Mans. We need to think like Ferrari. Enzo Ferrari will go down in history as the greatest car manufacturer of all time. Why? Is it because he built the most cars? Mm -mm. It's because of what his cars mean. Victory. Ferrari wins at Le Mans. People, they want some of that victory. This would take decades to test and develop a race team capable of taking out Ferrari. Ferrari's bankrupt. What? Enzo has spent every lira he's got chasing perfection. You know something? He got there. And now he's broke. Uh-oh. Racing doesn't pay them either. And I keep winning. Yeah, because you're good. But I can't play the game. I'm not what they call a people person. You don't right? say. But I'm 45 years old. Do you really think I'm going to change? What are you planning, Peter? If you stop... Bloody insufferable. It's a quick going around the ring, you know. It's over. Let's look on the bright side. Now I can get fat and old, trim the roses, and eat pork pies. Oh. Scoos F, please. No photos. Prego. Relax, man. You gotta understand. This is like the mafia showing up by the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Press gets wind of this, this shit will hit the fangio. Prego Gotzi. Perhaps. Journalist. Oh, no, let me say a cock it's our camera today. One man assembles the entire engine by himself. That is so interesting. Everything hand built. Racing department. Me. That's it. Ford Ferrari. 90% owned by Ford, who controls all production. In order to uh, secure this, Ford will pay the sum 10 milioni di dollari. Excuse me. You will need some time to read this. Uh, yeah, I understand. Okay. Sto cercando di andare. Sto cercando di andare, Agnelli, per prendere la fiesta. È occupato. Agnelli! Agnelli, scusami. Guardi, ho le fotografie, deve assolutamente vederle. No! Oh, now everyone will know. Small question. This turns my race program. If I wish to race Le Mans. Do not wish for me to race Le Mans. Do we or do we not go? Look, in that highly unlikely scenario, we just can't agree. Yes, I mean, no, you are correct. We do not go. My integrity as a constructor, as a man, as an Italian, is deeply insulted by your proposal. Go back to Michigan, De back Machina. to your big ugly factory making its ugly little cars. Okay. You're pissed off Enzo Ferrari. Headed boss that all his uh, smug executives are uh, 
worthless sons. Tell him he's not Henry Ford. He is Henry Ford the second. Tranquilo, con afán de morir, de mañana. Well, it could have gone worse, honestly. Oh, and Fiat bought Ferrari now. He used us to up his price. What exactly did he say? Ooh. He said Ford makes ugly little cars and we make them in an ugly factory. Executives are sons of about me. He called you fat, sir. Pig headed. <laughs> this is so awkward. You're Henry Ford the second. Oh, I think he took that one pretty personal. I want the best engineers, the best drivers. I don't care what it costs. We're gonna build a race car. Ooh, so that means we're going with your idea after all. Oh, Charlie, quit throwing crackers at the girls all damn day. God damn. <laughs> well, now I'm not saying you should go drag racing, but uh, quarter miles, 13.6. Yeah. Is that good? Oh, that's real good. <laughs> you take the payment. Whatever you do, do not let him take that car. That's Jeff Blitzer's car. Can bring Collins and Steve McQueen's. <laughs> Forgot about McQueen. Warren, can I help you? Carol Shelby. That's right. What's with the wrench? Oh, long story. Terrific sales. We're killing it on the track. Now, I know I owe Ford for that last batch of engines. Mr. Shelby, I can assure you I'm not here for money that you might owe Ford for spare parts. You're not. <laughs> we want to hire you. He wanted his company to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. We're one of the only Americans that's ever done it, so uh, what's it take? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Money can buy speed. Hmm. It's not just like those other tracks where all you do is turn to the left for four hours. To win that race, you need a car that's light enough to do 200 on the straightaways, but strong enough to keep that up for 3,000 miles without a break. Not just the best car y'all have ever made, but better than anything that Enzo Ferrari shows up with that year. And that just gets you to the green flag. That's where your problems really start. Yeah, leave us be. So you're saying it's challenging. Look, it's not even a track, Lee. Le Mans eight and a half miles of country road. You gotta do that for 24 hours. That means night. Half that race is in the dark. You can't see shit. Cars coming up on you out of nowhere. Drivers stumbling around the track. Pouring blood. Maybe one of them's your friend. Maybe maybe he's on fire. Hmm. Can't remember your name, what country you're in, and all of a sudden you realize you're doing 198 on a straight. And if anything goes wrong, that's it. The whole thing's over. Ferrari wins again. Looks like he won last year, the year before that. But now they've been sold to Fiat, so imagine if Fiat is bad at what they do. Who knows? Ford Motor Company can build the greatest race car the world's ever seen. Maybe. Even if we wrote a uh, blank check. Now he's listening. Fun fact, I really wanted my first car to be a Fiat, but I've had a Peugeot and I've had a Toyota. But I really wanted it like a very small... I could get you a shot. Ooh. And I wanted it in the color red. Anything on this beauty that does work? The mirrors uh, outstanding. <laughs> so what? Are you just passing or evening stroll? Actually, Bulldog, I have a proposition for you. You're going to build a car to beat old man Ferrari. Yeah. With Ford. With a Ford. Correct. How long did you tell them that you needed? Two, three hundred years? Ninety days. <laughs> All right, so let's just look at this for a moment. You think that Ford are going to let you build the car that you want the way you want it? Those guys. Perhaps. I think they're pretty desperate right now. Oh, they're going to want to get their photo taken with a great Carol Shelby, and they're going to kiss your ass, and they're going to go back to their lovely offices, and they're going to work out new ways to screw you. Why? Because they can't help it. Because they just want to please their boss, who wants to please his boss, who wants to please his boss. And they hate themselves for it. Who they hate even more are guys like you, because you're not like them, because you don't think like them, because you're different. Okay, speaking facts. They're gonna put real money behind it. <sighs> because someone, and I'm not saying who, someone has told them that this is actually possible. Listen to my speech. I'm making a speech. <laughs> Dad, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, a Mustang. What do you think? I think it's the secretary's car. 
I think it's pretty. I like it. You and me both, Peter. Oh, we're not allowed to touch. Would you ask him to keep his hands off the paintwork? At least now we know who's responsible. Don't get me wrong, Lindy. My advice is lose the inline six and that idiotic three speed, shorten the wheelbase, somehow lose half a ton and lower the price. Dad. But even then, I'll still choose a Chevy Chevelle. Kev is going to get everyone to hate him. How we doing up there, Steve? He called that an F word terrible car. They're gonna hate him. We're screwed. That's, that's a true story. Why are we doing this? All right. Let's go. Wait, are they crashing? Lord. Who's the pilot? My guess, Peter. <laughs> Someone we know. <laughs> That's like riding a bike. Talk about making an entrance. Good grief. What? Shelby. Good to see you. Are, are you building a car that's going to beat Ferrari? Well, we're going to go to Le Mans, that's for sure. And get across that finish line first, we're going to win. Oh, sure. Yeah, pleasure, Mr. Baby. Thank you for coming. Say hello to Ken Miles and his son, yeah. Peter. Yeah, we met. <laughs> this is so awkward. Joe, why don't we just... Step this way for a second. But there's got to be a sense of give and take between you and, you know. No, I don't. And your creatives, Carol. Just make sure everybody's comfortable. Well, I'm confused, Lee, because up until this moment, right now, I was comfortable. I see 10,000 moving parts moving, hopefully, in harmony, and it's my job to make it so. Do not step on that stage if you don't trust me. Please welcome Mr. Carol Shelby. Gotta go. Interesting. It's a truly lucky man who knows what he wants to do in this world, because that man will never work a day in his life. But there are a few, a precious few, and hell, I don't know if they're lucky or not, but there are a few people who find something they have to do, something that they can't do it, and drive them clean out of their mind. I'm that guy, and I know one other man feels exactly the same. <laughs> his name, his name is Mr. Henry Ford. I thought I was going to say Ken. Let's go. My name is Carol Shelby. I build race cars. Wow. Whatever it is, no. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I'll have you back for meatloaf and gravy. 30 minutes. Yep. Is this your new? Oh. Yeah. Still a little on the rare side of cooked. Okay. Well, it's awful. Oh. Oh. So the third gear is too high. Torque is not reaching the road. Steering's loose because the front end gets light. And over 140 thinks it's a uh, airplane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shelby American. Are you working? Mm. So you didn't go any place. Well, I'm asking, did you go any place last night? Yeah, he was. He was driving a sports car. Summon up, love. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're driving very fast. You tell me, because I don't know. What? Slow down! Whoa, 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 whoa! Molly! I saw you leaving with Shelby, and I saw you coming back. Slow down, you're too close here! Molly is not playing right now. Not until you, gonna... you tell me what's going on! I went to look at a car! With Shelby! With Shelby! A racing car! Sort of! Sort of? Because it was so bad. Just don't lie to me, Ken. Don't make it a secret what you want or what you feel just because you, you think it's going to make me happy. It's 200 a day. $200 a day. That sounds like a very good deal. Are you nuts? <laughs> Overnight, air's getting in, not getting out. It's the nose. Feel it in the wheel. Get some scotch tape and a ball of wool. Right. 
Good, good, good. So now... I see it! Yarn blows straight up! Ooh, okay. That's clever. This car wants to go faster. I feel it! It's getting lighter. We're getting fragile. So put in a bigger engine. Where are we going to put it? On the roof? Has to make it 52 pounds lighter than the NASCAR unit! Vibration dampers, water pump, smaller valves. We call it the beast. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> so, you already put that in a GT40? I'm afraid we have. I'll be down. Okay. Come on, Alex. Just a second. Thank you. Okay! Perhaps you want to check with HQ before you touch. What do you say? Whoa. Mr. Shelby, welcome to Dearborn. What are you doing at a test track? You're going to get castor oil all over that nice... <laughs> Personnel for Lamar. Well, it's a hell of a lineup. Ken Miles, Phil Hill, Chris Amon, or Bruce McLaren. He owes a lot. McLaren. Well, you don't want the best driver for the car, understands the machine. That's Ken. Oh, yes! More of that, please. Ford means reliability. Ken Miles not a Ford man. Oh! What about it? What's the lap record here, Bert? 158. 150 dead. That man landed a busted tank on the beach at D-Day and drove it clean across Europe to Berlin. But I don't understand what the problem is with him not being a Ford man because in the first situation here, they went out of Ford to find people that, to actually do the job because people in Ford can't. That's Ken Miles. Isn't that good that Miles isn't part of Ford because the problem is within Ford? I think he may be too pure. What exactly does that mean? It means he's all about himself. ABC puts a microphone under his nose. Perhaps there's a detail he dislikes. Millions watching. Do you trust him not to put out the wrong message? Shit, you get Doris Day to drive the car if all you want to do is lose. So you don't agree with us on this issue? I'm saying you got to trust me on this one. Put a Ford-type driver in the Ford car, Mr. Shelby. Ugh. Oh. Puke. <laughs> hey, boss. Yeah. Boss. Back you got a passport? What's that? Sign that, get a passport, get it back to me by Friday. Frosty. Boys, I'm going to France. <laughs> Problem is that with that height, there's too much drag under the car. We have a solution. Wedges. You put wedges You're not in coming the suspension. Next week. You're not coming, Ken. We're taking McLaren, Chris Amon, Phil Hill, and Bob Bondurant. It's Ford's call. It is their opinion that you are not a good image, so you cannot drive their race car. You're the best man I got behind the wheel. Can I adore you? It's the spillage of the drip onto the rear near side disc. Yeah. The, uh, the gearbox will overheat. Who cares about being a good image anyways? The world is doomed. No, I'm upset for him. Another Ford has come into the pit. I feel like this is so sad. Who's there? What's that you're listening to? He was supposed to be part of it, and they just took him out of it like that. It's not exactly champagne. <laughs> I think he won anyways. Even though that his job sucks right now, he still has a job, paying well, has a beautiful wife that loves him. He has a son that is so proud of him as well. You know? Uh-oh, are we in trouble? Oh, Fort Lewis is big. Yeah, we had problems with the gearbox, so... Mr. Shelby, Mr. Ford will see you now. Alright. This guy? See, you kicked him out. Is this good for your image? As I was sitting there, I watched that little red folder go through four pairs of hands before it got to you. Of course, that doesn't include the 22 or so other Ford employees who probably poked at it before it made its way up to the 19th floor. All due respect, sir, you can't win a race by committee. You need one man in charge. You still managed to put old Mr. Ferrari exactly where we want him. Did we? First place? We haven't worked out how to corner yet, or stay cool, or stay on the ground. 
and a lot of stuff broke. In fact, the only thing that didn't break was the brakes. Hell, right now, we don't even know if our paint job will last a whole 24 hours. But our last lap, we clocked 218 miles an hour down the Mulsanne Strait. Ole Enzo ain't never seen anything move that fast. And now he knows, without a doubt, we're faster than he is, even with the wrong driver. Damn. That man is scared to death that this year, you actually might be smart enough to start trusting me. I'd say you got Ferrari exactly where you want him. You're welcome. Now he's stressed, but we need to figure out what to do. But I kind of don't want Kev behind the wheel either because his wife is scared of something. And I think she's scared of the driving. And there is one man running this company. You report to him. You understand me? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. Thank you, sir. I don't like that guy. You were right. It's a gearbox. We ran too hot. We're going back, Ken. They told me I had a carte blanche this time. I looked it up. It's French for horse shit. Oh. You want me to apologize? Hmm. That would be something. Ooh. Ken, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea the kind of shit that I had to eat just to get four wheels on that grid? Because you don't deal with any of that stuff. Now knock it off, Ken. We got work to do, and this car ain't going to build itself. <gasps> Okay. All right. You kind of deserved it. Oh, come on. Now you're going to get it. You're ruining our food. God. This is not very Batman of you. Oh, he's running. He's running. <laughs> oh. Man down. Man down. Both fell. Well, hey, darling. Yes, love. Can we get a fizzy pop, please? Yes, love. You want one too, Shelby? No. Oh, yes, please, no. Molly. No. He can get his own. It's for me, please. Children. Such a nippy, nippy bloody thing. Did you yeah. want to hear all that thing? I call that the Shelby llama bite. Bloody... What? Where well, you learn that? All the Girl Scouts. You want to oh. go again? Here you go. Good angel. Thank you. Oh. A fussy pop. It's a soda. Okay. Get it up, get it up, get it up, get it up. And we're back. Well, there's still lag when I hit the gas. Let's get rid of the vacuum secondary. Probably three weeks to Daytona and it still feels like a bag of squirrels. Okay. So how do you see it? You're going fast, but as the car speeds up, Everything else slows down. You don't do that. You do this. You can't just push the car hard the whole way, right? That's right. You have to be kind to the car. If you're going to push a piece of machinery to the limit, expect it to hold together, you have to have some sense of where that limit is. Out there is the perfect lap. No mistakes. Perfect. <laughs> Most people don't even know it's out there, but it is. It's there. You want some ice cream? Your mum bought some. You know what this marker is? What? That one. Put my finger. You'll find out. <laughs> that scene was so nice. Seeing him spend some time with his son. Talking about his interests. I love it. Hey, not for one goddamn guy. Sure I can. Well, why? Because while we're here talking, he's out there getting it done. Mm-hmm. That's right. Shit! The brakes broke. Peter! Go inside! Ken! Get it out! This has happened before. I've seen it. Ken! Come on, come on. Come on. Let's just rip out the damn engine. We can't use it if we can't stop. You know, the brakes would last longer if we slowed down a bit. Wouldn't that defeat the whole purpose of the extra power? You know, I thought the whole point was to win the damned race. Rotors included. Put in a fresh one. Wait, 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 Pops. Are we allowed to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever been on fire? No, no, it's never happened to me. The suit's flame-proof. See? It uh, keeps heat out. But Lewis Evans... Then to death. Even the Moroccan Grand Prix. Yeah. 
See, he got stuck. He couldn't breathe. But as long as you get out of the car, you're okay. Dad got out. He sure yeah. did. That is wild when I say the same thing as them at the same time. You know how we talk about how you do your thing, I do my thing. This is my yeah, thing. Chef, just, just trust me, Ken. It's high risk. No high risk. Extremely high risk. Well, that's something. Glad we had this talk. Anytime. <laughs> Shelby, can I have a word? In private? Ah, uh, yeah, that would be preferable. It calls on me, Shelby, to inform you I have been appointed overall executive director of the racing program. I do hope that this won't be a problem between us. Well, I assure you, Leo, it will not. Hey, Carol. Well, why don't we state? take it for a spin? You see what $9 million feels like. Hey! Just to hold me right there and you take my hand. Okay, so that's how we can solve the problem. Sat on my nuts. We're gonna build the next one for comfort. Oh, whoa. Open the door. Sorry, sir. If you just give me a moment. Oh, when the door! Hit it. That a boy. Oh, it's got a little baby. Okay, sir. Yeah! is terrified. <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> I don't think you liked it. Look what you have done. You okay? I had no idea. I wish my daddy he were alive to see this. <laughs> to feel this. This is not a machine does anybody can get in and easily control. Absolutely not. Now, you want to win Le Mans. You really want to take first place. Ken Miles is the man to do it. You let Ken Miles race Daytona. If he wins, he gets to drive Le Mans. And if he doesn't, Ford Motor Company gets full ownership of Shelby American. Lock, stock, and brand. That means he's very sure that Ken will win it. But you can never be sure of anything because he got very hurt. Or he didn't get very hurt. Thank God, but he could have died. He's being pinched. Drivers, the speed, the strategy, even the RPM are determined by us. Okay, I understand why he has to work within marketing. It's good. Did you see that? Oh. Hey there, Walt. Good to see you. Yeah, after I get out of this pitch, Shelby, it's the last time you will. Oh, don't worry. We got rear view mirrors. Well, that was that Mustang he took out. How come these guys pit so much faster than we do? We got a goddamn NASCAR crew. That's why. No shit. No shit. Ooh. Oh, I think they're celebrating because now they get to get all of Shelby's brand stocks and everything all right she could come apart one way to find out <sighs> keeping them under 6000 shut up Don. doesn't seem like it Don't do it. Okay, Peter, what are you doing? You were dead, you. What are you doing? I was drawing a map so I could follow you. Look at that. Which race is 
the most difficult one. They were talking about it in Gran Turismo, the one that was the most dangerous one. Because of like a small hill, kind of. Once your old man manages to hobble over, pull out. Not hit anyone. The first three and a half minutes of 24 hours. Oh. He can't make every lap. But... Yeah, he can't. I'm not driving. That's a bloody shame, but... Oh, hell, I couldn't make this thing. Let me go walk the first corner. No, I figured. <laughs> I've heard about his story. The more I've been watching this, the more of his story I remember. But as I told you guys, I was hooked on the racing world for three weeks. Zero. Time to run. He's back out. Go. Oh, was that scary? Because if his door is jammed now, let's say it starts burning, how is he supposed to get out? His son is so proud, I love it! Okay, we're good, we're good. Whoa, this was such a nice shot. Avete visto? È una gara automobilistica e lui ci viene in elicottero. È classico. Oh, driving in this weather. Not only driving, racing. You want one? They're Italian. <laughs> Very nice. Mr. I can't swap out my upright assembly. A part is a part. Be it a brake caliper, a rotor, or an upright assembly, and I can swap out any damn thing I want to. He's psyching them out, and it's completely working. He's like, this is so easy. Clever man. He doesn't trust a car yet. Come on, Ken. Gave you new brakes, buddy. What did you come here for? He needs to take another lap on it. Peter, you are so good at this. <laughs> the 
successo? Ma di nessuno. Si è rotto il motore. Maybe look sad. Now I'm upset too. You know, I was thinking, Mr. Ford. Wouldn't it be great if all three Fords lined up across the finish line at the exact same time? He thinks it'll be a historic moment for Ford. It'll make a great photograph. Don't go near my daughter. Go on. No, this is what you want. Oh, I hate that guy. They want you to slow down. You're out signing their car, Ken. We're four minutes up on McLaren. The deuce wants the three Fords across the finish line. One, two, three, all together. They're asking that you be a team player. I wouldn't. Sorry, I wouldn't. They want it for a picture for their PR. But where was the team building? The team work? How, why, where was the team when they kicked him out in the first place? He always has a clever smile. Three thirty point six. That's another record. It's a perfect lap. Bring him in, Shelby. Ten miles is behind the wheel, Leo. That's his car to the finish. Don't do it, Ken. Oh, he's gonna do it. The three Fords are going to cross the line together. Ken Miles slowed down. He waited for them. He's bringing them all in together. Okay, it's kind of nice, but he deserved it. He's not won the race. McLaren started further back. He's saying he's travelled that little bit further, so he's won another long distance. That's what I thought. Shell, they robbed you, Kim. Hey, then. So he still got second place, yeah. I never should have asked you. Yeah, you should have never done that. I hate that marketing dude. Oh! Oh, he fall, did he? Let me take a shower, get a cup of tea. I mean, she's cop or something. We're gonna get the bastards next year. Yeah. Next year, ain't that right, Ken? A little bit of fuel left in the tank, what you were looking for. I know you. There's a point, 7,000 RPM, where everything fades. The machine becomes weightless, and all that's left is a body moving through space and time. You feel it coming, creeps up on you close in your ear, asks you a question. The only question that matters. Unfair. What do you think? Yeah, it's fantastic. It was really good. Nice and smooth. It's so unfair. Strong. We drove it for less than an hour. You can tell the shit after an hour. Hey, Shale. Shale. That guy, you know, the one in the hat, he's ready to close on those two 427s. I need you to come outside for maybe a minute. And do what? Be Carol Shelby. What does that mean? Magic words. Get in the damn cars. That's what they get for their money, Phil. Now, either they want them or they don't. Am I some kind of a lounge act? No. Am I here to talk people into things? It's been six months, Shell. <sighs> six months. <laughs> I Whoa. Get out of the he didn't get out of the car. <sighs> oh, poor Peter 
and Molly. Mr. Shelby. Oh, hello, Pete. I remember that wrench. My dad threw it at you. <laughs> Do you want to speak to my mum? Well, I did. Uh, I came to say hello, check in on her, and then I started thinking sometimes words are, are not useful. Tools are useful because you can make stuff with them and you can fix stuff with them. Too. Thanks. Your daddy was, uh... He was your friend. Oh, stop! And he thought you was just finer than frog fur. I think I'd better go help my mom. What are you doing here, then? Go on. Uh, it is so unfair. Incredibly. Oh. Uh, it is so unfair. Incredibly. Oh. Great, my day is ruined. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay, guys, we just finished watching 4v Ferrari, and it was a tough one. The more I was watching it, the more I recalled of stories that I've read. I didn't know that this was how it played out. I remember I had read about Miles before. Sorry, Mr. Miles. Um, I read that he won the 24-hour race of Daytona and that he got to second place of Le Mans. I actually thought it was third place. I don't know why. I thought it was third and not second. But seeing that he lost because of this and then him just trying out a new car for Ford and then dying because of not getting out of the car when they were like telling his son it's okay when they get out of the car your dad got out of the car it was like foreshadowing until the very end of his life where he didn't get out of it and it just broke me because i noticed what was going to happen and then we saw it happen and i just broke down and that's okay because i i'm a person of a lot of feelings i feel i feel a lot and that's okay. I've never been the one that watches a lot of motorsport. I find it scary. And I don't like speed at all. I remember when watching Gran Turismo, it was very difficult for me to watch the movie. Because I have this fear of people driving past. And I think it's because of something I experienced before. When I was a lot younger. And then watching this one, I feel I was more calm. But seeing this happen, like several things happening, it it is terrifying. And people sitting in these cars and things happening so often and frequently. And some people even dying on the tracks. It's scary. The one I was thinking about was Nürburgring. Because that is where there was a huge accident and someone actually died. That is the one that I was thinking about. All in all, now I'm yapping on. I love this. I love the story. Uh, watching motorsport in a movie is something I've been really enjoying. This has been my second one. And so far I've been loving it. It's rough and it plays with my feelings and I become very emotional. And I think that's okay. Please <laughs> let me know in the comments down below if any of you also get emotional watching things like these. Because it makes me feel a little less lonely. Or just an emotional wreck at all times. But that's fine too. My full reaction is over on Patreon. I hope you guys have had a wonderful time watching this together with me. All my social media, links down below. Second channel, up in any of the corners. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you in my next video very, very soon. And I hope you want to subscribe to my channel as well. Bye everyone. Put your hand.